Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we conclude our study in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, titled, That I May Know Him. This is part 2 of 2. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. That's God speaking to you. <laughs> That's God speaking. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercised loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. That's awesome. To know God, not just the, that he exists, not just that he is, not just know about him, I meet people all the time can tell me a lot of things that the Bible says about God. And yet I'm talking to somebody that doesn't even know Him. It's comparable to all these people who are just whacked. <laughs> I meet so many people who spend their entire day following Hollywood. Who's with who? The next movie coming out. The next big thing. Who's wearing what? What hairdo? is everybody wearing. I've joked, I've said if somebody put pencils, if Hollywood made a movie and a guy put pencils sticking out of his ears, you'd see all the young people in America running around with pencils sticking out of their ears. Right. It's like a, just a mass cult of brainwashing. Amen. And they can tell you every movie some of these people made. Everything's going on in their personal life. Now, there's nothing wrong with having knowledge. And some people, I don't have this problem, but some of you may have the kind of recall where you just learn things and it stays up there. Fine. You ought to be playing on Jeopardy and making some money. Amen? <laughs> but if you know all that, and then we, we talk about people who are into sports, and they know all the sports players going back to the 1950s and all their stats and all that, no matter what it is, there's nothing wrong with knowledge. But when you fill your head with all that and you don't know God... Think of that. You're going to stand before God and admit you really don't know anything about Him. This book that you had at your fingertips your entire life, you didn't bother reading and studying. But then you've got all this knowledge about crap. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to be one very embarrassed fool standing before God on that day. To know God, not just facts about Him, so how do we get to know God? G Jesus said this, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Amen. You can't know God until you know Jesus and are born again. If you think otherwise, then you're saying, I believe Jesus is full of it. Amen. Amen. If you think that you can know God without knowing Jesus, without being born again, you're thinking, you think Jesus is a liar. I say that because I've met so many people who basically say he's a liar. I meet people all the time who say, well, I believe, you know, I'm a Christian, but I don't think you have to know Jesus. I don't think you have to be born again. And I look at him and I say, well, then you think Jesus is a liar. Because you do. <laughs> if Jesus is a liar, we're all going to hell. <laughs> he's not a liar. Well, that's true. If Jesus is not, if Jesus is a liar, then I guess the atheists are right, and we're all just going to one day. Okay. <laughs> that's a little more accurate. Thank you, Johnny. That's true. <laughs> well, if he's God, but if he's not God, then the atheists are right, and let's all just go get drunk. Amen? <laughs> Legalized pot, let's go! Why? Good. Jesus isn't real. Let's just have at it. Drink and be merry. Amen? But he's not a liar. We go through it all the time of how he proves his word Amen. thousands of times over. But being saved doesn't mean you really know Jesus. When you first get saved, you don't really know him. 
And if you don't grow from that point, you remain a spiritual infant the rest of your life. And it'd be funny if we saw people physically the way they are spiritually. Most Christians would be walking around with nothing on but a diaper. Sucking their thumb. Thank you. That's the way most Christians today are content to be ignorant, to content, content to reject what the Bible says, to not grow, and if we saw them physically the way they are spiritually, we would see them in a diaper sucking their thumb. So what's the answer? The answer is to stop being so arrogant and to submit yourself to the Word of God. If you would just begin to submit yourself to this book, daily you'll grow. Suddenly, you'll have clothes on spiritually. Suddenly, you'll be able to walk. No one will have to change you. <laughs> Diaper, I mean. That's what I mean. And being saved doesn't mean you know Jesus. But now that you are saved, you can get to know Jesus. Once you're saved, you can get to know Jesus. So how do we know God? To know God is to know Jesus. Amen. Once you're saved, you can get to know Jesus. And as you know Jesus, you know God. John 14, turn over there. We sang about it. If Well, some of you were here. John 14. John chapter 14. Wonderful, wonderful passage. Beginning verse 1. We're going to read through verse 7. Beginning verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are, are many mansions. New versions pervert that and turn it into compartments and all that nonsense. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. You know what Jesus has been doing since Acts chapter 1? Preparing a place. You know, imagine what that place is going to be like? Compartments. <laughs> Verse 3. He says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Isn't that a wonderful promise? That's true for every person who's saved. If you're saved here today, that promise is for you. In verse 4 he says, And whither I go you know, and the way you know. And Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. Amen. Not a way. The way. The truth. And the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you don't believe that, you're calling Jesus a liar. And you'll get your chance to call him that to his face, but I'll guarantee you, you're going to hit your face on the ground in front of him. You're not going to say that. You stand before him one day. That's the reality. Now look at verse 7. We're talking about knowing God. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. See that? You want to know God, you got to know Jesus. And if you know Jesus, you know God. I'll tell you, when I got that, it almost made me shout. I almost got excited and said something. <laughs> so how do we get to know Jesus? How do we get to know anyone? You talk with them. You think of your best friend in the world, whoever that may be. Best friend you may have had as a child or as a grown up or adult, your wife, your husband, whoever it is. Best friend. How do you get to know them? You talk with them. I said with them. 
Not just to them. Not just at them. You talk with them. That means you pray, and you pray with a heart that's open. Now, you listen. That means when you talk with them, you listen. So you're not only just asking God for something all the time, but you're also listening. And how do you listen to God? No, not that voice in your head. You listen to Him through His Word. This book is how you listen to Him. And all of your thoughts are to come into conformity with this Word right here. And as you conform your thoughts and your opinions and your desires, you know, people always say, you know, if you, you love the Lord, He'll give you the desires of your heart. And they think that means if I desire to be you know, uh, President of the United States, or if I want to be, you know, filthy rich, or if I, you know, that's not what it's saying. It's saying He'll give you the desires of your heart, meaning your desires are going to change. What were your desires will no longer be your desires when you're right with God. Because none of us have a heart right with God when we come to Him. So when we come to Him, there's always going to be a change. And He'll give you the desires of your heart. Not only will he, He'll give you the desires, meaning you'll stout, now desire what He wants you to desire, but because He wanted you to desire it in the first place, He's going to give it to you. <laughs> See how that works? People want Him to just give you your desires without conforming their desires to His will, His Word. You also spend time with them. Now, that isn't just in Bible study and prayer. That's just throughout your day. You're in His presence, aware of His presence. You don't have to hit your knee and fold your hands and, Our dear Heavenly Father, we now ask you... That's not... Prayer can be just what you're doing while you're doing whatever you're doing. Amen. As you're driving, please don't shut your eyes and bow your head. <laughs> but you can pray while you're driving. Amen. Anybody here, a uh, hairdresser or anything? You know, don't be closing your eyes while you're flipping. You know, <laughs> our dear heavenly Father. Oh, well, oh, sorry. Here, here's your ear. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you're doing. You can keep your eyes open, but your mind and heart on the Lord. You hear that? Your eyes can be open and focused on what you're doing, but your mind and your heart can be stayed upon Him. That's how you get to know Him. And you live with them. You, you, you have your closest friends. I remember I, you know, going back when I had a real close friend a few back, before, you know, I'm talking years ago, I'll just say. Try not to name names. Don't embarrass anybody. We spent all this time together and we'd spend the night at each other's houses and go camping together. And we, we were practically living together all the time in a very platonic Male-to-male -male relationship. Today's, not like today's perverted thing. But that's how I got to know my friend. You could do that with Jesus. And you know, it's just natural then. You fall in love with Him and you want to talk about Him a lot. You find yourself wanting to talk to other people about Jesus because you're in love with Him. You're talking to Him. You're listening to Him. You're living with Him. You're spending time with Him. You can't help but talk about Him. And then people run from you. Amen? <laughs> oh, here comes that Jesus freak. I want to close with a couple of thoughts on this. And the, number one is the very purpose of the ministry of Jesus is that He is our access to God. As, as I said, to know God is to know Jesus, and to know Jesus is to know God, and that's why Jesus came. He is our access. Over in 1 Timothy 2.5, this blows away all the priesthood. It blows away you, the idea that you have to come to a human being to reach God. You don't have to come to a human being to reach God. You go right through Jesus to the Father. Amen? Amen. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Jesus is what you need. And knowing Jesus is knowing God. Described by the Apostle John over in 1 John, the epistle, first epistle, chapter 5, verse 20. And we know that the Son of God is come. That's where it starts. Read that with me. 
And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true and we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Amen. Amen. That's it. Knowing Jesus is intimate. I don't want you to think, I'm not trying to pin this picture of mysticism. That's why I always warn about some of the stuff you hear and see on Christian TV and radio and all that. It's intimate because it's personal. It's between you and God and it's constant. And it's comparable to that relationship I mentioned before, like with spouses and close friends and everything. It's, you're in a physical, tangible situation there. And with God, you're not glorified yet. You're not in His full presence yet. But there is an intimacy to it. And it's, as I said, personal. It's not between you and your church. It's not between you and your family. So many people say, well, my dad was a preacher, or my grandpa was a preacher, or whatever, and blah, blah, blah. That means nothing. You don't ride coattails, and Jesus is never called a grandparent. You have to have a relationship with God. It can't be your parents or your grandparents. He certainly isn't great grandpa Jesus. Amen? Amen. It's got to be between you and the Lord. It's personal and it's all encompassing. It should be. When you know Jesus, it begins to just kind of go through your whole being and everything you are and everything you do. It's in your thoughts. Uh, you, when you think about where to work, where to live, who to marry, how to spend your money, how to spend your time, all these things are affected by your relationship with Jesus. It's all encompassing, knowing Him. And heaven will be to know Jesus in His fullness. Each of us forever united with Him. Heaven, that's what it is. Let's sing about 496 in the hymn book if you turn there. Victory Jesus. Oh, 
Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful message from your word. In spite of the messenger, so wonderful. And just the thought of being glorified in your presence. We just pray that everyone in this room, everyone watching on the internet, and those who will see this and hear this later on, will join us. And if anyone is hearing this and is not saved, they will repent toward God. Amen with faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe how that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried and rose again according to the scripture, and that as we read in John 14, he's gone to prepare a place for us, and he will come again and receive us unto himself. And with that thought in mind, Lord, we ask you guide us, not not only today, but throughout every day. Guide us through our day always aware that you could come at any moment. And we do pray, Lord, come quickly. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's go. Great song, but a great one.
Yeah.